Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, Puzzle. Look at that setup, beautiful setup for a puzzle today. Uh, it's called Thermo Boost by Pete Craig. I think it's his first time on the channel, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, he, he said, I hear you're looking for puzzles that aren't all that hard. Uh, this one, I've got you covered, he said. So we'll see. Let's hope he's not a troll that Simon has deputed to try and get some revenge on me um, and that this is nice and accessible. You'll be able to judge from the video length. Now, before we get on with that, if you want accessible puzzles, look no further than our Patreon March reward, which is um, called Guess Again and is available to all our paying patrons. Um, there will be a solution video to that coming out after the competition closes on the 20th of March, but you have until then to send us a four letter word entry and uh, we have had many correct entries. I would just say that. And this was a kind of follow up to last month's quite approachable Sudoku, which was so popular that 1700 people had a go and sent us an answer. And I'm wondering if we might exceed that number this time. It's fantastic. Anyway, thank you very much to anybody who does support us on Patreon. I saw for the first time we're in the top 100 Patreon channels just by number of users. I certainly think we're we're outside the top 1,000 in terms of revenue from Patreon, but we're in the top 100 for the number of uh, Patreons, which is fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody who has joined us there. And if you engage with the channel in any other way, there are all our apps that you can buy on the links under the video. There are um, all of all of the Discord server, and there is a lot of that. There's all our catalogue of past videos, two and a half thousand of them. Check them all out if you are getting into Sudoku, and why not? Everybody is. So we've got um, in this puzzle, which is the first link under the video, the other, the other links below that are all to um, the various bits of merchandise and uh, all the things I mentioned. Um, the first link is to this puzzle, and there are two extra rules apart from Sudoku rules. One of those is thermo, so digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. So we have to be getting bigger as we go along this thermometer from the bulb to the end, just like a real thermometer. Um, now, we also have quadruple rules, which are very simple. The digits in each circle must appear in four surrounding cells. So these four cells have to be three, five, six, and seven. These four have to be two, three, seven, and eight. These four have to be two, four, six, and eight. These four have to be three, four, five, and six. Obviously, we have to determine the order. And um, I don't know, I'm really impressed by the layout of this puzzle. For this to work just with those thermos and those quadruples, that's brilliant. And uh, do give it a try on the link in the video. Okay, given what Pete said, I'm going to guess about 20 minutes for myself, but that could be hubristic. Right, let's get cracking. Um, wow, I don't know, if you've been following the channel, you know me, I like to pencil mark things. So, okay, well, the thermos, obviously the way, the natures of these crossing thermos means that the two bulbs can always see each other in a row or a column. And that means these two cells, for instance, on this thermo, are always smaller than these two. Now that doesn't mean this is a two, four pair, but it does mean two has to be in one of these because it must be smaller than the other digit on its thermo. So one of those is a two. Actually, I'm gonna mark it in the corner as well. One of these is an eight uh, because eight must be higher than the other digit on its thermo given that quadruple. And then the others are four, six. So they kind of form an arrangement like this. I'm gonna do the same with these other thermos just to see if that tells me anything about the general patterns we have going on. Um, so three is the smallest, seven is the biggest, and then five and six must be disposed there too. Three is the smallest, six is the biggest. Ooh, I forgot to put in, oh yes, right. Yes, this is good because now I can see that given that there is a three in one of these two cells, that means there's no three in the rest of the column, which is particularly interesting here. If there's no three there, we can take out the pencil mark three, and now 
the three in this three, five, six, seven quadruple is fixed. It must be here. So can we do, yes, that takes, well, that takes three out of those two cells. Okay, that's not as good as what it did here. Two can't be in those two. Ah, oh, two can't be in those two. That's the way to look at this one. So we can take two out of there. Definitely this is a two. And what do we know about a thermo with only one cell before a two? It must be a one. So that is a real start. Now, what else do we do though? This one is a one or a two. Um, one of these is a two. So one of these two bulbs must be a one. But if I pencil mark that for the column, I might misunderstand it for the boxes. I, I normally only put these corner marks in where a digit is confined to one place, with, to, to a couple of cells within a box. Ah, is this... Oh, if this... If this was... Three. Oh, it does work. Two, seven, eight, and then you get nine. Yeah, given that one of those is eight, one of these must be nine. I've only just seen that. Um, ah, no, that's lovely. If this was seven, that's the question. What happens if this is seven? Well, that becomes eight because it's on the thermo, and that leaves no cell, no digit available for this cell. If this is seven, you must get an eight here on the thermo. And that one can't be seven or eight anymore. So this isn't seven, this is two. Oh, that's strange. That's a slightly different relationship. Um, maybe it doesn't help all that much, but maybe we can take that somewhere else. So if this was six, that would be seven, this would be five. No, if this, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna pencil mark the rest of everything just because, oh no, look, two there. That gives me a one in the bulb. Okay, I'm not going to, because I can now place one in column three. I finally get to do some actual Sudoku, not just studying the constraints. Uh, it's very clever, this actually. Um, so we get a one there. Right, this can't be a three now for a totally different reason because this can't be a one or a two. They've got, they're in the box already and it's got to be smaller than this cell. So that's not a three, that's a seven. That's eight, that's three. The eight needs a nine after it. And that's further progress. Nine, seven, two, eight, so this can be anything. Well, four, five, six, seven, or eight, anyway. Um, three is confined to one of those two cells. Uh, do, do, do. Does this two, I know, is in one of those two. I suppose I'll mark it. No, oh, we're not done at all yet. Right. Um, okay, three, four, and five must have one, two, three, or four before them on their thermos. And we've used three in the column. So these are from one, two, and four. And four, five, six. Ah, we can't have a nine. Oh, we can't have a nine on the ends of any of these. Right, so that's six, seven, eight. This one can't be eight either. Yes, this is helpful. So this is five, six, or seven, since it has to be bigger than four. But now we know it's this is not an eight, because it can't have a nine there. So we can take eight out of that. We put eight in here. That gets a nine on its thermo. We're gonna get a nine in one of these two cells by Sudoku. This is two, four, or five, I reckon. It sees a three and a one, and it can't be bigger than six. I bet these are gonna work out so that this is six giving the maximum degrees of freedom there and this is four giving the maximum there but I can't write that in that's just that's just instinct if you like oh eight is confined to one of those two and notice that and therefore one of these two um, there we go. 
go. Now these, yes, I was going to pencil mark this. This is 5, 6 or 7 as well. It can't be 8 or 9 either. Whoa, it's approaching a triple. Um, this is also 5, 6, 7 or maybe 8 this time. And what about this? This is quite big. This is 6, 7 or 8. This is smaller than 6. So that's got a fair amount. So now I've, oh no, I haven't pencil marked everything. That's hardly worth it. Three, four, five, or six, I suppose. And this one also, four, five, six, or seven. Not very helpful. But now I have pencil marked every cell on a thermo. Now we've got this four, six pair. Oh yes, eight and nine in this column have to be down here. So that's now a three, five pair. Um... Eight. Okay, I'm going to have to come up with something slightly clever, I think, still to do with the junctions of either this thermo or this one. So, what can we see? If, if four was there, this would definitely be a one-two pair. Is that useful? This would definitely be a 7-8 pair in that case. I don't think it really does help, actually. Hmm, okay. Um, ah, one of these is a 7, so one of these is definitely an 8. If that was a 5, which is quite plausible, this would definitely be a 6-7 pair. And this would be a 7-8 pair as a result of that. Oh, hang on, I've got... Ooh, if one of these was a 5, this would be a 3-5 pair. This would have to be 6-7. That would put 5 here. I can't see this immediately. I think, I think I'm probably missing something smart, some sort of reasonably sensible question to answer. What am I to ask? One, seven, two, three, eight, nine is in one of those two. One, nine, eight, three, five as a pair. Ah. Sorry, if you can see a relevant, oh look, three, a relevant question. Just keep shouting it at the screen, maybe I'll hear you. There's a three in one of those two cells and there's a three there. So three in this box is in one of those two. That's not, that's not quite getting anything done. Three in the middle box is in one of those three. If I could rule it out of there, I could place it here, which would be incredibly helpful. Why can I not have a three here? No reason. Hmm, two or one there. Ah, it's tricky, isn't it? Um, this is four, six or seven, just because of the things it sees in its box, including that three, five pair. Again, awfully close to this, yeah, this can't be both two and three. So one of them appears. I oh know, three is in one of those two cells in the row. Eight. Eight must be in one of those two. So these are not nine or eight, because eight must be in one of those two. They're not seven. This one is not five or six, because it sees all of those cells. So this is one, two, or four, as well as that. Now this, unfortunately, could be the same as that. So it can't be nine, eight, seven, or three. But the chance of confining it to one, two, four is broken up by the fact that it could be the same as that. Probably is, really. Um, oh, come on, there's something clear going on. 
four or six there. Does that have an impact here? If that was six, this would be six. Then, then what? Then I don't know. Um, so wherever seven is, it goes with eight. So if seven was there, eight would be here. That would be a five, six pair. So this would be a three, four pair. That's getting quite interesting. If seven was there, eight would be here. You'd have a five, six pair, a three, four pair. Trouble is the five, six pair could be either way round, so that could still be seven or eight. Okay, I'm not finding this straightforward. I'm really still missing something. One, eight, two, nine in there, seven in this row. Trouble is it can be here. Okay, four or six. Whatever that is, this has to be bigger and this has to be smaller. Okay, let's have a think about what I was saying before. If that was six, that would force this to be seven. This would be four and that would have to be two. Then we'd have a seven and a two here. Maybe that is a problem. I can't quite see how. No, I'm not there yet. Keep on asking interesting questions and getting unfortunately dull answers. If that was a five, we'd have a five, six, seven triple. Then Hmm, eight would be either there or there. In fact, eight in this row, that's quite interesting. Eight in this row anyway, can't be there or there. So it is either here or here. And eight in this row is in one of these two positions. So eights are a definite X wing. Now, that doesn't necessarily tell me much about row six because I've already got the eight there. But it does mean 8 is in one of these three cells and oh, one of these three which aren't that helpful. No, this is not. It doesn't look like the way to do it. I must be missing something basic about the relations on these thermocrosses. I really must be. Okay, there's a 3 in one of those two. If there was a five, if that was three, five, this would be six, seven. That would be five. Oh, that's impossible. This can't be five. It's that simple. Wow. I mean, I've been staring at this for ages and not spotting that. This can't be five because it's bigger than that cell. That's as easy as it gets on thermo. So five now definitely in one of those two and not in these cells. That's a three, four pair. This is a five, six pair. So these can't be five. They have to be from higher than that. This can't be six because of the five, six pair again. That can't be five. This can't be six. It's in the same box with the five, six pair. We're down to two or four there. Now, come on, keep going. This can't be four. It's only one or two. This can't, these two can't be four because they've got to be less than Three or four. So now we get a one, two pair in the box. Wow, it's so interesting how much flows from, from a simple bit of deduction. If that's, I don't think there's any more to be, oh, this can't be six. There is more. Ah, that's a seven, eight pair. That's a lot more. So seven can't be in those cells. Five or six there means this can't be six. That's so clever. That's brilliant, isn't it? Suddenly box, oh, there's a seven in one of those cells. So the whole of box four is unwound. We're done there. Now, one, six, eight, two. Now I know seven now has to be in one of these two. 
Uh, nine is in one of those. This can't be six. It's getting reduced piece by piece. Seven, that seven is now looking at this. So that's six, that's five, that's six. Doesn't sort the three and four, doesn't even, oh yeah, this has become six. These ones did operate exactly as I expected, but no prizes for that. This one, that's interesting. This sees nine, six, three, five, a seven, eight pair in the row and a one, two pair in the box. So that's a naked four. This is the other one out of one or two. That can't be five since we placed the five. So six, seven pair on the quadruple, that is a five. Um, six, seven pair in the box, that's an eight. That gives us eight here, seven on the end. That goes back on the thermo, fixes six and seven. Now we can do four and three. We've got a whole row complete. Just that one, two pair. This is one or two. Sorry, not now, Simon. I'll get back to you. This is a three. We've got nine and five to place in row six. There they go. Five, six, nine, three, four. So this is going well now. Come on, keep going, keep going. That can't be a six. Three, eight, eight, four there. So this is a two. And that fixes the one, two pairs. And now rows four, five, and six are finished. That becomes a one. Can't resolve this three, four pair, but must be able to do something else. Five, six, one, nine, three, four. Ooh, so two, seven or eight in the other cells, two or eight there, two, seven or eight there. Six in column four, that's where it goes. Then a nine, seven pair, that makes this an eight on the end of the thermo. That makes this a nine, stops this being an eight. In fact, the nine makes this a seven. In fact, that fixes this row nine, column seven. Two, three, four, so that does the rest of the column. That can't be seven, seven, eight, five, three. We've got four, two, three, four, two, one. This is an eight, five pair. This is six, nine, seven. Now I think this is coming. So I think this has been a very clever puzzle. Now maybe I was just a bit slow with that cell. One cell that I was slow at identifying what to do, but it really makes a difference, doesn't it? Um, what have we got? Three, four, five. That's three or four as well. We need a one in this box. We need a three in this column. That's good. Okay. That's going to sort everything out, isn't it? Four. Well, three, five pair there that's not resolved, but I think everything else is going to come now. Seven and a four, five pair. That's not a four. We've got one, two, and nine to place. Ooh. Another chocolate teapot triple. That one two pair might help. Well, five is naked here, it does. That fixes the three five pair. Six and eight at the ends. Um, three, four, nine here. So three at the top by Sudoku. Four and nine there. Now that has become a two, one on the bulb, two, four, what a lovely puzzle. That is a really elegant piece of work, Pete. Thank you for sending it. And I mean, not monstrous, but clever. And that's exactly the sort of puzzle we like to solve on the channel. It doesn't have to be too hard. It just has to have some really clever logic. And that had it in spades. Thank you very much. And uh, certainly hope to see you again on the channel for more Sudoku soon. Of course, there's all our Wordle stuff going out every day. Simon did a Dave Gorman crossword yesterday, cryptic. Loads going on all the time, and we hope to see a lot of you. Bye for now.